Hey everybody, it's Ezra, and welcome to the second episode of the Ask Ezra podcast. Today, we'll be joining Nick and Melissa again for the second half of the first session that we've done with them. Today, we'll be talking about humiliation and degradation and how they're different. We'll be talking about how do you develop your dominant voice, and we'll also be sharing how important it is to share your emotions, your needs, and your wants with your partner, and how important that is to developing hot and sexy intimate times. Enjoy the session already in progress. I, I feel like for years, I've been trying to kind of like step into my domness in different ways. I think it's more expect, it's always been more like expected of me as a dude to kind of like have that side, right? Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that I've always struggled with and have practiced to a certain extent is finding my voice in the bedroom. Mm. I mean, sometimes I really feel like it comes easily to me. And then other times I just, everything feels weird to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Do you absolutely. Any, do you have any tips for that? Yeah, absolutely. So first I want you to give yourself permission to not always feel like 100% on, right? right. Because yeah. that's just unreasonable. Like we all feel off sometimes. I'm, I'm I am a full time BDSM coach, educator, performer, pro dom, and sometimes I don't feel like I'm into it. You yeah. know, like it's my whole fucking life. And sometimes I'm like, I just want to eat chips and watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? for sure. It, so it's not even it's not even so much that I'm not into it though, and it's that well, it's, you're it's trying to I, find your comfort zone, yeah. like your, your level of comfort and like. Uh, I don't know, having that confidence to just like do it. And, yeah. You where know? It's just, and I feel like, like, sometimes I feel like it just, the words come out of me and it feels great. And then other times I'm just like, why do I sound like a porn star? Like, where mm -hmm. did I, where, you know, like it just doesn't. Cause that's where you're getting it from. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So if you want dominant words, don't watch porn. Watch, <laughs> I love watch that. Watch movies. <laughs> watch movies <gasps> there are actors who are yes. very much in charge mm -hmm. um okay what was it um secret secret lies with um arnold schwarzenegger mm -hmm. true lies maybe i can't remember no, but he's got like he's playing <laughs> i'm i'm fucking up the movie name but he's like a spy and he this is his wife and he's pretending it's not him he's yeah. and his like wife is being tricked into like doing spy stuff but she has to like strip for this dignitary it's yeah. the weirdest situation <laughs> but he's got like a tape recorder and he's like take it off more slowly now walk towards me <laughs> turn around yes. you know what i mean so like yeah. they're all commands so yeah um have you have you seen i'm pretty sure you've seen this movie it's my favorite secretary oh absolutely yeah we, yes. do, we do a movie night and we just did secretary a couple yes, months ago you have nice. to watch that it's yeah it's a good one so, um some good dom examples yes in that one? Okay. absolutely okay, cool. it's called secretary so. yeah yeah the story of o is really good too they're both like really poor examples of how to be a decent human but mm -hmm. but that's fine it's fantasy exactly so, yeah um but to, to come back to, to the point right so yeah. like sometimes yeah. so to find your words um all you need to do is find somebody who's assertive find somebody who's dominant as an example right um who's not and, a porn star in a porn video. yeah who's not a porn star <laughs> yeah like if you found something that was like really hot in a porn you can be like i like that feeling how do i get to that feeling mm -hmm. right okay. but uh generally speaking Porn star actors are not particularly good actors, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Generally speaking, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, paint it all one color. But it's true. That's why um, I hate porn. Yeah. <laughs> I hate um, it. The other thing you can do is choose your words early. Choose your words when you got a clear head. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be poetry, but you can figure out what you want to say ahead of time and practice it. And the more you say it the less weird it feels right yeah and um, I've, I've i've felt that that is that is true definitely over the years i i really like the tip about looking to um assertive or you know dominant voices outside of porn because i think that's really what catches me up is when i feel like i'm just repeating shit that i've heard in porn videos 
that's been I get in my head about it and it just doesn't feel natural. But, and I think that that is over the years, kind of the examples that I've been sort of fed in different ways, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're not alone at all. Yeah, absolutely. Different examples, you know, and, and I, and not, you know, I'm sure I've seen different examples, but I just never thought of them as, Oh, that's examples for how I could talk in the bedroom. Yeah. 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 Well, and uh, you can think about this way too. Like, um, I have the pleasure and the curse of like thinking of everything in terms of power exchange and there's power exchange everywhere. You know, all of your teachers were your dominance, right? You get pulled over by a cop. Do you tell the cop what to do when you get pulled over? No, Mm -mm. not at all. Right. Do you go to the doctor and tell the doctor how to check you out? Mm -mm. No, you're totally playing a submissive role. And if you are in a position where you have subordinates, you're dominating them. Okay. Even if it's totally professional, you're like, I need you to do this in this way at this time. Can you do that for me? Oh, yeah, no, this is fascinating. I'm like thinking back to when I used to play soccer. And I'm like, I could kind of talk to you as if you were like one of my defenders. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And so there's two, there's two advantages to that. Like number one, you can role play that specific power exchange dynamic, right? I was doing power exchange when I was practically still in diapers because I love to play fucking doctor, right? right. Mm, okay. So I was playing doctor. So I, you know, I need you to open wide for me. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's not a dickhead thing to say, right? Yeah. That's like, that's really kind. Like, okay, you know, hold still right? That's like a very kind demeanor. And so when we, when we role play, we get a chance to sort of like pick our attitude, right? So um, you could pick that, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger character, right? Or you could pick the doctor, the generic doctor or the police officer or whatever, you know, you get to do, you get to choose whatever you want to be. You can get like really detailed, like, okay, like you're a prisoner and I'm the prison guard, but we had a relationship and then it ended, but you're still trying to get something out of me and I'm resistant. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, yes. you can, you know, That's it can so be, <laughs> yeah, it could get so deep, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> yeah, fun. yeah. Write a script, right? Yeah. I'm sure you've okay. written more than one script, Nick. I've, I've written a couple in my day. It's yes. true. It's true. Definitely. <laughs> Time to write a sexy script. Yay, sexy script. (laughs) Hey, everybody, it's Ezra. And wow, isn't that exciting? Wouldn't you like to be the next guest on our show? Well, you can. Just email askezra8 at gmail.com. And hey, if being on the show is too much and you'd just like to get some private intimacy coaching, that's available too. Now back to our show. So you mentioned like wanting to feel small, Melissa, but I also heard you heard you saying that it kind of, you kind of have a good handle on it. Yeah. I know how I want to feel. Um, I know when I'm in my small space, I know when I need to be cuddled and nurtured I know when I need to be, you know, I really like being spanked um, a Mm -hmm. lot. Um, And it literally just depends on how I feel like, if I check in with myself, oh, what do I need today? If I'm, you know, oh, I need to be spanked. And it's, I've been really lucky actually, because Nick, like, just, I've never had to really ask him to spank me yet. He kind of spanks me when I need it. Um, but not, but <clears throat> um, I like to be like, I like pain, like really high pain. I have a really high pain tolerance. And I like bruises. I like the pain on top of the bruises. And I personally like, don't know, I don't know how to like get that feeling of like asking for what I need. Um, if, if I'm like wanting to be bruised or if I'm wanting to feel that sensation. Um, are you does it make you nervous to ask me to just to hit you that hard yeah it does because I don't want kind of the same thing with me wanting to be like really dominant I don't want to be off-putting or like scary because I like really hard hits Hmm. you know yeah well there's um I think it's great because it 
this is coming from a genuine place of concern. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's great. It just shows you care for each other. Yeah. Um, but I think that this is almost like a syndrome that comes from being socialized as a woman, right? Mm -hmm. You're often told that your feelings or your needs are not important and that the comfort of others is more important. And yeah, I, but... I want you to realize right now that that's garbage, dog shit, patriarchy bullshit. I appreciate you saying that. I was, yeah. the way I was raised was definitely, you know, exactly like that. Those yeah. Were... So, so it, so the way I imagine it feels mm -hmm. is that being silent is a favor because you're not making the other person uncomfortable. Right. But I want you to know that that's not a favor, right? The favor is being vulnerable and being honest and being open and asking for what you need. Yeah, okay. and I of course like want to make you happy. So yeah, you know, like you, yeah. So like, I just I'm, you know if you want me to hit you harder, like I definitely want you to let me know. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. guess it would be like I guess I should say this like I would want to know how you feel about hitting me that hard. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's the kind of thing where we could plan to do it almost. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, you know, like next time we hang out or today, you know. I'm going to ask you to hit me a little harder. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to try and hit you a little bit harder. You should let me know. Mm -hmm. And we can mm -hmm. check in about it afterward. Okay. You can ask me how it felt. I can yeah. ask you how it felt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. De you know, decompress mm -hmm. and yeah. like unpack yeah. is super important so that you can get really confident about those activities. And this is another opportunity you can like make a script, right? I know I've sort of, this is, I feel like a broken record right now, but, um, but you can, you can come to a place of vulnerability and say, it's really hard for me to say this. So I'm going to say it this way every time. So you know that here I am being vulnerable. Oh. So like an example might be, daddy, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Right. And like now you're sort of saying, okay, like I want to be in little space and I want to ask you something and I'm being really vulnerable. And okay. because you've had that conversation, like, hey, this is what I'm going to say when I'm feeling vulnerable. Now... Nick knows, okay, really pay attention here because her feelings are on the line, right? Yeah. Be okay. be because you could, he could be like in the middle of washing the dishes. You could say, hey, can you hit me hard? And he's exactly, like, yeah. he's like not paying attention, <laughs> you know, yeah. and he's not really at fault for not giving you full attention, right? Mm -hmm. But if you sort of preface the conversation, say, hey, can, can we have this conversation, right? Um, do you like that? Do you think I, that would make it easier? I mean, it's another it, conversation about using the word daddy and how that makes you feel. Sure, but I, I think in general, the idea of, of using some sort of voice when you are trying to ask me for something that you feel like normally you can't ask for or shouldn't ask yeah. for. You think that would work? That definitely would work. Because I do like, I don't baby talk, but I do like, you know, when I do like my little babe thing like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, I would yeah. kind of sneak in your ears and be like, Daddy, can I ask you something? You know, just yeah. kind of yeah. Like, yeah, we can talk yeah. about it. Well, yeah. and the words I picked don't have to be the words you use, yeah. right? I just yeah. sort of yeah, like that. I like that. that. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. a kind of, we haven't really talked. One of the things we're my, like going to figure out or trying to figure out is the whole use of the word daddy because I do like the daddy girl dynamic you know mm -hmm. I like the small I like a whole bunch of, I like being a slave I like all the things but it's about like how do you feel hearing the word daddy like you know what does that trigger in your brain versus like my brain mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like you know, I don't want you to think I'm seeing my dad in my head or some shit like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I mean? Because I, yeah. I like saying daddy <laughs> and I like kind of like, I like how you said that, like, daddy, can I, can I ask for something, you know, because yeah. then it allows me to be in my small space and I don't have to really, I don't have to like choose anything. I'm asking mm -hmm. you for permission if I can tell you something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like, I like how you said that. Well, and I think, I think you're, I think I hear it that you're not like necessarily expecting success every time. And yeah, I love no. that, you know, when yeah. you're, you're really, there's nothing so uh, submissive mm -hmm. as expressing your desires mm -hmm. without expecting a specific outcome. Yes. Right. So yes. giving him the opportunity to deny you Yes. It can be super hot, right? You exactly. don't, Nick, you don't have to feel into it every yes. time. Exactly. You could you literally know? just be like, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> oh my God. Or what are you going to do for me first? Yeah. Or 
how hard uh, you how long can you it? wait yeah that you can yeah. you know denial can be super sexy i'm i'm all about the tease yeah. and denial oh, yeah. i know you're into it yeah. yeah i like that shit a lot <laughs> um two examples of how i use that in my household um mm-hmm. if i i tend to be kind of tactless somehow somehow i'm like really tactful and then other times i just fucking like it's like i don't even understand what tact is right Mm -hmm. and so my partner will like put a hand on mine Mm -hmm. right and that's my indicator that i need to watch my tone or how i'm talking or how honest i'm being in the moment right and so that gives me an opportunity to not be humiliated because i'm really sensitive to humiliation because if my partner said hey you being kind of an asshole then i i might not react well to that right? I might feel yes. really humiliated and I don't like that. So yes. the hand on the hand is like a physical indicator. And then she's got like a look that she could give me, right? If the hand on the hand doesn't make sense to me, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. No, I know what's going yeah, on. No, I know this uh, is, yeah. Time for me to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then because I'm in a 20 soul four seven owner property relationship, um, it doesn't always feel like my partner has a chance to speak her mind. And I do want her to speak her mind. Mm -hmm. And so even though she's not specifically like excluded, she's not specifically banned from saying anything to me. She still sometimes feels like if she said this, it would be outside the dynamic. And so she'll might say like permission to speak frankly. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is entirely for her because she could yeah. just come come out and say some shit and I'm fine. But yeah. she feels like she doesn't want to step out of line. Yeah. yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's good tips. And I think bottom bottom line, like we should talk about just, yeah, strategies for, you know, if you if you're wanting something, I definitely don't want you to feel like you can't bring it up with me for whatever reason because you're conveniencing me by not bringing it up because it won't definitely mm. want to be making you happy. I'm not like conveniencing you. Yeah, I just you know. don't want to off be off putting. Like, yeah. I, right. you know, the, right. the impact I that. like is like really extreme, yeah. you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah. So. Nick, Nick, you I'm might have to you. tell her, <laughs> yeah, I might have to tell her how valuable her opinion is uh, over and over again. It might, like, in nice. my experience, it's it like, it lasts for like a week or two and then you have to bring it up again and say, hey, like, yeah. I really want to yeah. hear until they get used to that until it's yeah. sort of because yeah. it's a socialized problem. She's been socialized to think that, that her opinion's not important. Exactly. And so you need to yeah. reso- help re-socialize her. That's exactly what I was going to say. Socialize yeah. you right back out of that. <laughs> yeah. Hey. yeah. And this is how we get better. This is how we yeah. become better people by like, exactly. like helping our partners when we see, we see these roadblocks and helping our partners, you know, yeah. break down these roadblocks. Hey everybody, it's Ezra. Do some of these challenges sound like some of the things you've been dealing with? Maybe your challenges are very different, but you just love to have somebody to work on them with. Well, you're not alone on your journey. I'm here to help. So email askezra8 at gmail.com or visit us at askezra.info and maybe we can set up the session where we just focus on you. All right, back to the last component of our show. The last thing on the list was degradation. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys practice it? Do you want to? Is it? Is it? I don't even. So that one, I think of all the things that were on the list, there's perhaps the most of a mystery to me. I've um, had some experience with it, with receiving it. I really, really, really like receiving it. And I have a thing with like, you know, things in public, but it's, that's kind of touchy because is the I mean, yeah, I like work in the restaurant industry and I don't want to see like the customers, you know, in public while I'm getting like caned on a fucking light pole or something. Mm-hmm. You so, know, or yeah, so on. you work in the restaurant industry, so you don't even have to worry about Nick degrading. You can just let your customers do it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> customers degrade the shit out of me. Yeah, exactly. Those, yeah. But yeah, I just, you know, I've been like, like spit on. Um, I don't know, like kind of like. So, okay. So question number one, because I thought degrading in my mind is something that is mostly psychological, but that's not at all what you're saying. Well, no, because Uh, there could be physical activities, but it's causing a psychological reaction. Exactly. Yeah. The the feeling that I like is definitely like the psychological aspect of it all. Like, so yeah. So first, first step, we have to unpack um, degradation versus humiliation. Because I feel like they're used interchangeably a lot, yeah. and they're not the same thing. 
Okay. Okay. So degradation is the opposite of ennobling, right? So degradation has everything to do with your station in the world, okay. right? So um, if you get fired, that's degrading. If you get hired, that's ennobling, okay. right? Okay. If somebody decides that you are royal, if somebody, you know, gives you a call and says, you know, your great uncle died and he was a king and now you're next in line, right? Now you're royalty, that's ennobling. That's where the word comes from, right? Mm -hmm. um, conversely, if you thought you were royalty and it turns out it was all a sham, that's degrading, right? Okay. Um, so up and down on that social scale, that's degrading, okay. right? Um, now humiliation speaks to a specific feeling of embarrassment, right? Yeah. And okay. there needs to be some kind of an audience, or even if it's just an imagined audience. But I would call humiliation extreme embarrassment. Okay. Mm. So they can go together. They often go together, which is why they're yeah. rarely separated. Yeah. But some people want, uh, will, you know, can enjoy humiliation and don't enjoy degradation or vice versa. Could you give an example of how the two might interplay in like a scene? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, and it's, it's tricky because everything is subjective, right? Sure. So, um, a lot of people like to be called the whore, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, being a that whore. Be degrading. Depends. Mm. So okay. uh, a lot of people feel like a, a prostitute is low on the social scale, right? Mm. And mm. so being called a whore for those people is degrading. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. However, okay. everybody runs around giving sex away for free. <laughs> <laughs> so if you got paid to do that, boy. <laughs> That's ennobling. Yeah. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the question is, do you want to be uh, like a filthy, worthless whore or do you want to be the best whore? <laughs> Definitely filthy, worthless. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's degrading. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worth when we're talking about worth, mm -hmm. that's, that's degrading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And now the, the question that sort of is the titration for uh, humiliation is have you ever been embarrassed erotically? No, I. Uh, what if we told everybody that you were a filthy, worthless whore? I. It makes me smile because, <laughs> like. But is it empowering because you're like showing your true self, or is it like kind of erotic because it's it's like an embarrassing situation? I feel like it's erotic because that in society is looked down upon. It's like not, you know, it's like, I don't know, not accepted, if you will. So mm -hmm. just because of that, like, it feels good for me, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah I'm, it's kind of hard for me to explain. Like, yeah, I, it's tough. Yeah. Like if somebody were to call me a filthy whore in public, like at a bar or something. It would put a smile on my face and make me want to drop down to my knees and suck your dick, <laughs> you know, in yeah. front of everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like, it sounds like it's, it's both, uh, you know, both humiliation and degradation. Yeah. So I would challenge you to make a list of things like um, activities and words mm -hmm. and, and try to pull them apart for your own benefit, but they don't really necessarily have to be two different lists. Um, so to like make that list about what is humiliating, what is degrading, what is really erotic, what words are like a positive trigger, what activities okay. you mentioned, like face spitting. Mm -hmm. Some people like, you know, to have their face put into the dirt or the ground mm -hmm. or stepped on or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Make that list and present it to Nick again without expectations and then see Nick what you can deal with, you know, yeah. because if... Um, because it can be really challenging if you feel, um, you know, it's again, we're running into some socialization issues where Nick, you've probably been raised to be a good person and a gentleman, and oh. it can feel like these things are really not okay to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you, you remember, these are favors, these are kind acts to your mm -hmm. partner, because that's what they, that's what they want. That's what they need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want her to come really hard, you might just have to step on her face. Yeah. <laughs> so would that be degrading or humiliating? 
depends on the person it depends yeah all right yeah and yeah. you don't have to figure you don't have to bother to figure it out because it sounds yeah. like she likes both yeah. yeah um now it's with that along with that list of of hot things to say you should also come up with a list of things that are really not hot that are turn offs mm. right yes. and yes. even if they're like neutral even if you're like i don't mind that but it doesn't do anything for me put that on your no list because like some people for example or like call me worthless whore all day long exactly. but if you call me a bitch it's yes. over i was right? just gonna say the mm. word bitch it's yeah. not it doesn't click for me mm -hmm. you know when i hear bitch i'm like what what you want to do like what yeah you you're what, you know? yeah your fight or flight is engaged. exactly yeah. i'm like let's go take this outside man you know yeah. different yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so make the list and flush it out really flush it out because okay. the worst thing is to be in the middle of it and find one of those words Okay. Right. Yeah. And then neither one of you is really at fault for, for doing that, but it, it can be a growing moment. And, and sometimes we just want to fuck and not have growing moments. Yeah. 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 True. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you got to keep her on your hands there, Nick. Be good to her. I know it. I know it. I will. You are. Um, thank you, sir. As well. Yeah. That was yeah. Good. My <laughs> pleasure. No, yeah. this is fun. I'm happy to help. Yeah, this so. is amazing yeah super yeah. cool that's um, what i do i feel like <laughs> i feel like as soon as we get off of this i'm gonna write some shit down. oh we're hella talking <laughs> yeah, yeah we're hella talking right now yep <laughs> um, you got me excited i thought you were gonna say you were gonna fuck right after this thing oh we're gonna but, do that too uh, we'll, nice. we'll probably do that at some point too yeah, yeah think of me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, i hope you've enjoyed the ask ezra podcast if you'd like to be kept up to date about upcoming episodes, classes, book discounts, anything like that, then email us at askezra8 at gmail.com and just let us know you'd like to be added to the mailing list. Thanks for watching.